hey you guys welcome or welcome back to my channel i wanted to do a little extra video this week because i honestly don't think this video is going to do that well but i still wanted to post it this is going to be a little informative video about classes i took my freshman year as a early childhood education major i attend winthrop university and every school and every program will not be the same this is just my personal account for it and this was for the 2019 through 2020 school year so if you're watching this in like five years time or something anything could have changed and another thing that i wanted to say is that with winthrop again i don't know if this is like this in other schools but when you're accepted into winthrop university you are not accepted into the into the college of education so i have to apply for the college of education um, sometime this year during my sophomore year if i don't get in i cannot take my classes for junior year so you really have to like, get in you have to take the praxis core but i don't have to take it because i can exempt it because of my act scores so i'm exempting that i'm not taking that test <laughs> keep that in mind if you are going to Winthrop University after you get into the school you still have to work hard to get into the College of Education they caught me off guard too if you have any more generalized questions like if I don't go through something as specific as you would like comment it down below and I'll be sure to answer also before we get started subscribe if you aren't already it will mean a lot to me and give this video a thumbs up like I said I attend Winthrop University I have the program checklist printed out and Winthrop gives you a whole detailed four-year plan of what classes you need to take in order to graduate and it's broken down by year and semester for some of the gen ed classes you might not need to take them if you took a certain class in high school or an ap class here's kind of what the sheet looks like in person can see the class name and how many credit hours it's take and this is fall semester and this is spring semester so I'm just going to go through the classes to kind of explain what the course was about and show you the textbooks that I had to use first thing on here I see is ACAD ACAD is a class that every first year student has to take at Winthrop but it's basically a class to get you like, prepared for college like I, I don't know it's kind of hard to explain like you have a peer mentor in that class and you have to do like one-on-ones I don't know the class is an easy A this is the book that you need for the class it's a planner but it also has like activities to do in it that you have to do weekly one of the first assignments we had to do was write out our schedule for the fall semester there was a, a week that we focused on time management and so we had to like put what we did every day every hour a very easy a class that just kind of help you with the time management and all this kind of stuff it's kind of hard to explain but it's a very simple class the next class is edco 101 which is development observation and analytic skills analysis skills and this is the textbook that you use in the class it is strategies and lessons for culturally responsive teaching which basically that's what the class is about being culturally responsive and one of the main assignments we have for that class is a I totally forgot what it's called but we had to do something that we weren't like really comfortable or familiar with and write a paper or do a presentation because I went to church which that was the first time I went to church and I don't even know how many years it's a good class I honestly don't remember that much about it. We rarely use this textbook. I know that much. Cultural responsiveness is like different cultures without being like offensive and recognizing that every student learns differently. Kind of stuff like that. I honestly don't really remember what this class was about, but I got an A in it though. Then is Writing 101. It's another gen ed class. It's your basic writing class you have to write like four essays and then the final exam i also got it in that class nothing too special about it it's a prereq for a class that you would take the next semester but this is also a class that if you took a certain like 
English class in high school or did like a dual enrollment English class, then you most likely won't have to take writing one one. They also say that it's one of those classes that a lot of people fail, which like I said, I got an A in the class, so I didn't really struggle with it. Then next is Math 150, which is a introductory discrete mathematics, which is another class that apparently gets failed a lot. I issued that class, but I believe I finished it off with a B, but it's mainly like statistics and problem solving kind of math it's not like it's not algebra it wasn't that bad but I could see why how or how people could fail it because like if you really didn't pay attention or like put the effort in you could easily fail that class I don't have that textbook because I let a friend borrow it I have my notebook I learn things like sets probability my professor he didn't check homework but I still did the homework anyway because it helped me and I also did tutoring and doing the homework was a great way to like ask questions. Next, you have to take a natural science elective. They have biology 150 and 151. So biology 150 is the lecture. It just talks about basic biology. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't really pay attention to that class. The professor was so boring, but I still gotta be in the class. And 151 is the lab. It was a bit more fun. We had a like, lab report. We had a presentation. For the, one of the lab reports, we actually had to go into the Winthrop Woods. We had to create our own hypothesis, basically. And my group did like the height of trees based on the age or something like that and there's a lab Winthrop University specific mat lab manual that you need to get for that class and you actually do need the lab manual and then you need to take a historical perspective elective on here listed is history 211 so that's what I took history 211 is basically from like when Christopher Columbus came to the Civil War or something like that. So it's not too bad. I did pretty good in that class because I've been learning that since elementary school. So we did have a textbook for that class and I did consistently read it at the beginning but then towards the end of the semester I kind of stopped reading it because at the end of the day he wasn't like giving us quizzes on the textbook. And then we had a PESH class which is like a physical education. It's called a PESH class but it doesn't count for a PESH credit but it's developmental movement for young children. We learned about like basically how kids need to move and we learned like appropriate physical activity games. Apparently Duck Duck Goose is not a good game because it singles out one kid or and not every kid gets the same opportunity as other kids get. Not as useful for me because I'm not going to be like teaching a, a PE class or anything like that. There were some fun times like where our professor let us go out to the gym. So those are all the classes assigned for the fall semester. So that's 17 credit hours. You have one credit hour for ACAD, one for EDCA 101, three credits for Writing 101, three credits for Math 150, four credits for the Biology. Um, 150 is three credits and 151 is one credit. Three credits for History 211 and two credits for the PESH class. There was basically one education class that you take your fall semester of your first year. So now onto the spring semester. If you follow this plan, you would be taking 16 credit hours. First class on this list is HMXP 102, which is the human experience, who am I? It was actually a really good class. I have the textbook right here. Basically in this class, it's a lot of reading. You have a, at least one reading for every class period and my class met twice a week and my professor also made us do journals for every reading that we did which sounds like a lot but it actually helped better understand what we were reading it's a discussion based class so you get a lot of points for participation it also focuses on writing so there was like three or four papers that you had to write for this and then the final assignment which since um we were in quarantine by that time we just had to do a little video I really enjoyed this class I did my little underlinings and had little post-its there's like 
one where I have so many post-its. There is actually some really good stories in here. And this is also a Winthrop exclusive textbook. And you have to take and pass writing 101 before you can take this class. Oh yeah, and here's a book that you use in writing 101. I believe it's recommended in HMXP and that is three credit hour class. So next I have on the list is Math 291 Mathematics for Elementary Teachers and it's three credit hours. This is the activity book that we had to get and you actually use this with two other classes. I'm taking the second class this semester and then the last class I will be taking next semester. This is pretty pricey and you have to buy this brand brand new for the access code because you use my math labs with this this class wasn't that bad it's like elementary school math and it, we also kind of um talked about how to like teach each of these topics to young kids with this class we got manipulatives which is actually really cool so we have some base 10 blocks and some two color counters and whatever the, these are and we actually did use these in class we mainly used the counters but i really like how fun and like hands-on and realistic kind of this class was you don't purchase these individually you basically pay for it when you enrolled in the class and that was three credit hours then probably my favorite class of the semester and probably of all of my freshman year was ECHO 200, Developmental Sciences and Poverty. This was a class where we had our first field experience. As it sounds, the class basically talked about how to teach and help children well, your students living in poverty. For field, we got, we got what was called a focus student and they were one that came from any sort of po poverty. One of the main things we learned is that poverty doesn't just relate to like lack of money. It can mean a lot of other different things, which I didn't know that personally. I also really enjoyed being able to go into this actual classroom setting and be able to actually talk to and experience you know what I experienced now Phil did get, get cut short because of COVID which really sucked the main reading that we had was by Jensen Carl Jensen I believe teaching with poverty in mind it's a great book I rented it so I had to give it back to the school but it was a really great informative book and like I said I loved the entire course like I loved the professor. I think my professor is the main reason why I love that course because I heard other people they didn't have different professors and apparently their professors were not that good but my professor was highly motivated. I really enjoyed her enthusiasm and overall her teaching. Yeah, you basically learn how to, you know, deal with students in poverty. They often get misinterpreted. Oh yeah, we also use this book in Echo. 200 we only used this book like one time and i got this from the, this girl for 50 dollars and it looks basically brand new and i can guarantee it's because they didn't need it i don't know if you're gonna need this book actually need it and use it and echo stands for education core and that was also with three credit hours then we have a social science elective there is well five that you can pick from geography 101 which is human geography anthropology 201 or 203 plsc oh political science 201 in economics 103. I took human geography 101 because I took that class in high school. It was AP class and I'm just thinking like if I took, well if I passed the AP exam I could have like probably not had to take this class. It was alright. I mean there's nothing really to say about it. Like all of these classes kind of suck but we have to take a social science as a part of what we have to do to graduate. It has nothing to do with why we're at school but Winthrop is a liberal arts school. They want you to have a well-rounded education. I don't really have anything to say about that class. Human geography, it's not fun. And then the last was a natural science elective. And you could choose from physics 205 or geology 110 or 113. Either way, anyone that you pick, you will have to take the other one the next year. So, so I took physics the um, spring semester of freshman year. So I'm going to have to take geology 
my sophomore semester and spring anyways just about which one you want to do first so like i said i did physics and it was the online class and it was worth four credit hours physics was an online class to begin with so not nothing changed once the whole school went online due to covid but this is the textbook that we use and we you actually needed this to do the assignment because our homework was in this textbook i don't know it's just a physics class i didn't particularly enjoy it but we had like homework due every week and we had chapter challenge due every week we had two writing assignments and the final was cumulative but one thing i did like about this professor is that he let us do as many attempts on the quizzes and chapter challenges and the test until it was due. They were typically due on like Sunday at like 11.59 so if I started on like Friday I can do it as many times as I wanted until it was due that Sunday. So with all of those classes that counts up to 16 credit hours. For the second semester you're education classes at Code 200. So another thing, I will be doing one of these videos after I complete each year of college because obviously I can't really talk about a class that I haven't actually taken or anything. I can't talk about these classes in junior year because I'm a sophomore. And classes just started today when I'm filming this and I'm uploading it tomorrow. So if you are more interested in the rest of the classes that you will take like sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, I will be posting them after I complete every school year. So next year, I will be posting classes you take as a sophomore early childhood education major. But that was it for this video. I just wanted to post a little informative video. Coming into this, like I knew I wanted to be an early childhood education major, but I didn't really know what classes I had to take. But there are some really good classes. But that was all for this video. I'm sorry. like. I know no one's probably going to watch this, but I really wanted to do it and be informative and as helpful as possible. But like I said, if you have more specific questions about any of the classes, comment them down below. Stay tuned for the video for this Saturday. It's going to be a vlog of my first week of classes for sophomore year. So yeah, bye.